Senator Thorpe. Thank you, Madam Acting Deputy President. There can be no question that our lifelong path of learning starts well before we step across the threshold of the school gates. It is also unquestionable that the years leading up to school are among the most influential determinants of the types of lives that we will go on to lead. We know that these early years are vital in laying the foundations in language, fine motor skills, speech, social, emotional and intellectual development. In fact, research tells us that 80 per cent of a child's brain develops by the time they are three. The question of how we strengthen the opportunities available to our young people in these vital years to give them the best start in life is probably one of the most important there is. I believe that a strong, professionalised education sector is one of the best means we have of achieving this. By helping young people to achieve their potential early, we can empower them to contribute more fully to their communities and society in later life. But first we need to make a shift in the way we think about and fund education. Today I stand in support of United Voices' Big Steps campaign to compensate early childhood workers with appropriate wages. It's time we started to recognise the importance of these years and, with it, the early childhood education sector's vital contribution in developing the Australians of the future. It wasn't so long ago, Madam Acting Deputy President, that we used to refer to early childhood educators as childcare workers. Some may say this is just semantics, but the change in title represents a clear conceptual and cultural step in the respect we pay to this important occupation. It is recognition of the critical contribution these workers make to the development of our young people. The impacts of the quality of our early ed childhood education sector are felt throughout society. Not only do they have an obvious direct educational role and contribute enormously to the building of healthy communities, but they have a clear impact on our workforce participation rates, productivity and, as a result, the wilder, wilder, the wider economy. We also need to recognise the capacity of early childhood education to play a great equalising role in society. Not every child, Madam Acting Deputy President, starts their educational experiences from the same point. There are a myriad of factors that may lead individual children to be at a disadvantage in their early ability to learn. But a responsive and stable early childhood has the power to identify and respond to these individual challenges and to help limit the chances of a young person falling further behind. By stepping in early to help young Australians rise above inequality and disadvantage, the sector can empower them to go on to lead fulfilling and engaging lives, engaged lives. Unfortunately, while we're beginning to understand the crucial role of our early childhood educators and the, uh, the role they play in achieving these outcomes, this is yet to flow through to workplace conditions. Despite the increased responsibilities and rightful recognition of the professional nature of the role, there has been no commensurate rise in wages. Currently, early childhood educators with Cert III earn $18.58 an hour. Diploma qualified workers don't do much better, receiving $20.86 an hour. This is almost $10 less than the average Australian and leagues behind what um, similarly qualified tradespeople earned. Recently, Madam Acting Deputy President, I took part in United Voices uh, Walk in My Shoes campaign. And it was probably one of the most exhausting days I've ever spent um, with all those dear little children. My choice to work with uh, teenagers with behaviour problems, I thought was, was probably quite a brave choice to make. But after a day in the company of um, a room full of uh, small two-, three- and four-year-olds, I decided that give me a room full of rowdy 17-year-olds any time. And the exper experience definitely cemented my insight into the daily challenges faced by these educators who were trying to make ends meet on $18.58 per hour. I can also understand how many have been forced to leave the sector because they simply can't survive. For many, it becomes a choice between the job they love and paying bills. Many have pointed out that they'd be better off stacking shelves in a supermarket 
a sad state of affairs indeed. With wages so low, I'm sure it will come as no surprise to my Senate colleagues that childhood, educators, um, childhood education centres across the country are facing a crisis in trying to retain their qualified staff. In an inquiry into early childhood development, modelling has found that we need to increase our early childhood workforce by 17 per cent if we are to meet our quality reforms. We also need to ensure that our current workers continue to undertake training to ensure our children receive the very best standard of education into the future. Unfortunately, far from meeting the growth that a quality education system requires, we are going backwards. In fact, a massive 180 educators are choosing to leave the sector every single week. This equates to one-sixth of the entire workforce leaving each and every year, often not because they're unhappy or don't find the work rewarding, but simply because they can't afford to keep doing it. This is nothing short of a workforce crisis. The only way we'll be able to turn this around, Madam Acting Deputy President, is by paying appropriate wages for what is a highly specialised and vitally important role. My hope is that eventually our education system will start at birth with no artificial break between federally funded and controlled early ed childhood education and state and territory funded schooling. But at the very least, we need to start paying appropriate wages for what is a specialised and highly important role. We also need to recognise that this isn't, this isn't just a problem affecting one group of workers. It's a problem that has impacts throughout our society, not least of which is for the 607,000 plus children currently in long day care and almost 489,000 families. Not only are our children not getting the stable and quality education they deserve in these vital years, but we are limiting the opportunities of women within the workforce. In many ways, this workforce crisis mirrors the state of the community services sectors not so long ago. Both workforces have a majority of female workers. Both workforces undertake some of the most important duties within society. And both groups of workers receive pay that doesn't even come close to recognising their true value. One of my proudest moments recently, Madam Acting Deputy President, as a member of the Labor Party, was in February last year when we recognised the value of those working tirelessly in the community and social sectors area, social, oh sorry, social and community services sector. On this day, Fair Work Australia made the historic decision to increase workers for community service workers, increase wages for community service workers. This meant around 150,000 low paid workers got a pay rise of at least $7,000. We recognised the contribution of these people made and we ensured that they were compensated appropriately. It's time to do so again, Madam Acting Deputy President. It is time to provide the federal funding needed to support professional wages for early childhood education and care workers. We must ensure we do so in this May's federal budget. We've shown it can be done before. We've shown that a fair pay for important work can make a difference and we can do it again. Thank you.